Frigidaire. We introduce the first home freezer. The first pulsator agitator washer. And now we introduce the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher, designed with a unique wash arm that gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. Hi, I'm John Malos. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this day. It is Thursday morning. Two guests in the studio today. We've got Supervisor Henry Perea and Chuck McGill later on will join us in the second half of the program. Hey, got an open line, 436, Me TV Option 11. A lot to get to here on the program today. Back in a moment. <music> Back here on the program on a Thursday morning. I'm so glad that uh, you are here. It's going to be a very exciting program today because we have a couple of guests in the studio today talking about some of the same old issues, but I'll tell you what, a big issue is uh, facing the City Council later tonight at about 5 o'clock uh, at City Hall. We'll get into that. A reminder, you're watching us on Comcast, Channel 187, 43.6, and of course now 13.1. And then later in the day, you can catch us 13.6 at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on YouTube. 8 o'clock tonight, this program replays at 4.6 on Biz TV, and of course later after today, uh, it will be posted on YouTube. Don't forget, I just joined Twitter, okay? So give me a break. I'm still learning how to use it. Uh, my son launched it for me. So at John Mallows, me TV, still trying to figure out how does this whole Twitter thing work? Hey, to the water rates, and uh, yeah, go ahead and laugh it up there, Henry. Uh, <laughs> it's my generation. We're techn technologically just not that advanced. Anyway, to the water rates and the water hikes, meeting at City Hall today at 5 o'clock. Hey, if you have any questions between now and then, call our buddy Mark Standriff over there at City Hall, 6218000. Or if you don't want to talk to Mark, uh, and have nothing to say to Mark, I don't know why, but uh, the recording number is 6218618. You should have mailed in your mailers by now. If you haven't, it's too late. You can't postmark it today. It has to be in the city clerk's office by today. Should have received this over the holiday. Uh, all those who live in the city of Fresno, check the box, sign it, return it. But if you're doing it now and you're trying to mail it today, forget it. It's too late. You might as well just run it down to City Hall because they do need it. Okay, I do want to get to the Janessa Ramirez uh, thing because I want to put up the uh, two um, suspects that uh, were arrested uh, last Thursday and Friday. Big news conference uh, held by Chief Jerry Dyer. Brian Cooks is on the left. He was arraigned just the other day for the murder of Janessa Ramirez. Isaac Stafford, they had to release him, believe it or not. Not sure if they just didn't have enough evidence or not, but I do want to mention Janessa Ramirez was nine years old. There she is there. That poor little girl on January the 18th was shot gunned down by a stray bullet that traveled more than 270 yards near Clinton and Marks. It's something no parent should ever have to go through in a community. An entire city is still in mourning over the loss of that little girl. Eric Green, the attorney here in Fresno, representing Isaac Stafford. Um, no comment from him, but he told Channel 30, though, that's his office number if you want to call him, he said that Stafford, his client, is a victim much like Janessa Ramirez, that Stafford never fired a shot. We'll get uh, some reaction about that comment uh, coming from Eric Green. Live in our studio right now is Henry Perea. He is the supervisor here. And uh, let's see what district uh, re he represents. District number three. I knew I had it written down here. He's going to take your phone calls. 436 Me TV. Option 11 here on MeTV. We have an open line, so there is a lot to talk about, a lot to get to today, including those water rates. The big hearing at 5 o'clock today. Back with our program in just a moment. A top secret location. 
It's the spies who love me, bringing together MeTV's top super spies to fight evil at a memorable moment's notice. They're daring. That's right. Free. Now what are we going to do? The best we can. Suave. Does that apply to me, Oscar? Possibly. And smart? The old finger in the gun trick. Maxwell Smart. MeTV Fresno. Channel 43.6 and Xfinity 187. Back here on the program, and uh, glad to welcome in Henry Perea, the supervisor. How are you, sir? Doing great. Good to be here. Gosh, I feel like I've known you forever, and I want to thank you. I think you for, we have. I, yeah, I, huh. yeah, I, you know, I can't remember ever not knowing you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to appreciate because uh, you've always been gracious. You've never dodged any serious topic. You've always been available to the media, and appreciate your service to Fresno County too. I appreciate that very much. Well, thank you, and I appreciate the people of Fresno County for having the confidence and putting me in this seat. Yeah. Hey, uh, before we get started here, some serious issues. You're traveling to Cuba here in when, May? In May, yes. Wow, there's a, Well, there's a, there's a delegation leaving out of Sacramento. My son, Henry T., is the chairman of the Ag Committee uh, in Sacramento, and he's put together with the speaker a, a trip uh, to Cuba, uh, taking an ag delegation. So there'll be a lot of the big farmers from this region going uh, to Cuba to talk about opening trade between Fresno County, the Valley, and, and Cuba. So it's a great opportunity for us to open up those lines of communication and trade. Safe to say you've never been there before. Never been, but I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> How long's the stay? It's going to be six days. Six days. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, um, do you have any Cuban friends? Do you, have you ever known anybody from Cuba? Actually, I have. Uh, I have a pretty good friend, uh, um, that's from Cuba. He lives in Florida now, and I actually emailed him and told him I was coming. Yeah. And of course, back in the late 80s, when the Cuban prisons were opened, uh, yeah. you know, a lot of them ended up in Fresno. And as a reserve police officer, we ended up dealing with a lot of them. None of them are my friends today, but uh, yeah, I've met you know different Cubans on different levels. Are yeah. those Cuban cigars? Are they still illegal? I don't even know. You know, uh, <laughs> I don't know. That's I'm a good question. Sure. <laughs> but if they're not, I'll bring you one. <laughs> okay. I don't <laughs> smoke. I'm a heart patient, so I can't, okay. I can't smoke. No way. But anyway, um, you know, I want to get to this. Uh, before we get into the county stuff, I want to get your reaction because, you know, this, this kind of deals with, I know it deals with Fresno Police. You're the county. But it also deals with the Fresno County District Attorney Lisa Smithcamp, newly elected, of course. Let's put up the picture of Cooks and Stafford. Uh, Stafford, of course, uh, released. What's your re what was your reaction when you first heard this, and and what went through your mind? Is it is it just a lack of evidence? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, you know, and, and I think that's what a lot of people are asking, and I know the District Attorney as. Uh, is sensitive to that because you know just when I saw it my first thing was what and I think I twittered it I'm pretty new to Twitter too but I put up the story and I said what question mark question mark what's going on here so you know I have to believe that they don't have enough information to to effectuate the the you know the arrest and the charge so they're gonna just hold off till they get more information but uh, is it fair to blame one agency or the other or oh, no it not just, at all is it just circumstance yeah no it's circumstance and it's, it's yeah. timing Okay. Uh, but I know having uh, talked to Chief Dyer over the course of this investigation, they, they've done some really great work and they're doing more work. And I think once they have enough so that the DA can have uh, uh, and make a solid case to prosecute, they will. Yeah, and they're looking for this other character as we leave. The, his name is Dante Hawkins. That news just broke last night. Uh, they think he's up in Northern California, someplace maybe Merced, maybe as far north as Sacramento. We don't know right now. Police don't know where he is. They're trying to track him down. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, uh, talking to Chief Dyer, when, when the case first broke, they, it was a $5,000 reward. And that same day, uh, Council Member Soria, my son Henry T., and myself, we each put in $5,000 to the reward fund. You to, did? To raise it to twenty. That's how it got to twenty. And you one, put in five grand of your own money? Yeah. The, the, well, wow. so, so when it happened, uh, when that happened, that's when the tip started coming in. And yeah. uh, they started giving each other up, which is, you know, what you want in that type of situation. You want people to give you the right information to yeah. get to an arrest. I want that picture of Janessa up one more time because um, we had the father here. It's hard not to look at that photo and not tear up. Um, you know, I, I don't know, Henry, you have kids. We all have kids. It, this is a tough one to take. I, I don't know. I've been in Fresno since 96. You've been here longer. Is there a story that you know of that's touched you more than this one? Well, I, I'll tell you. Um, one was Seth Ireland was a you know child that died under yeah. C our CPS care that that was a that was a tough one, but Matthew the, this Morby is tough too. Matthew, Matthew Morby, but this yeah. is tough. I mean it, it it's it's hit everybody, 
at a level where even this week we had a meeting with our own, within our own social services departments, public health departments, mental health departments, saying what is it we can do different in our schools to avoid these types of tragedies. So we're, we're rethinking how we do uh, and provide care for people. Yeah, and quickly before we move on, how do you how do you stop the gang violence, or can you? Is it in just a, it, an uphill battle and, and, and a fight you're never going to win? Well, I mean, it is an uphill battle because you every day you wake up, you can't control what happens behind people's doors, and you don't want to. But sadly, there are some folks that don't do good parenting, and the result of that are, are kids that are in crisis and they end up acting out. But what we can do a better job, I think, as a community is we have to create more opportunity, not just from education for kids, but more jobs for the, for, the, for their parents. I mean, yeah. th this is a very poor, distressed community, and I think the more opportunity we provide for people, the better off we're going to be as a society. Let's move on to the water rates, and of course, the big meeting uh, taking place tonight. I don't think they're going to take a vote. Sal Quintero, our friend, was here just the other day, and uh, he doesn't think they're going to take a vote. In fact, Sal said if they took a vote, he would vote against the, the, the rates going up. Let's put up the full screen on the $429 million dollar plan that's what you're looking at right there uh, over the course of five years your water rates would triple let's put the map up and Henry you know this map very well uh, the center there in the yellow is Fresno uh, city proper there and then the, the what they want to do is put that water treatment plant out on the east side about 14 square miles so they can develop that out near Sanger uh, approaching Sanger and then you have the city council members uh, we do have a phone call you have a city council mayor let's put those up real quick I don't know how these people are going to vote. Uh, there's the first four uh, right there. And then the next three, these people are going to be responsible for voting possibly on your water rates going up or staying the same or maybe going up just a little bit. Caller, are you there? You're on with Henry Perea. Yes, um, I just turned on the TV and I saw that those two murderers of Janessa. Yeah. Now, I was wondering why they would let out a you know, a person in a gang that is committed murder when they're out there doing their gang thing. I don't think, uh, I think both of them should be charged with that because if they weren't out there doing their criminal nefarious acts, that they just wouldn't have killed the little girl. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just straight out murder, and I don't see why they let that one out right out of the jail. I mean, I don't know what the district attorney is thinking, but I think he should be charged with a, a uh, manslaughter or, or, or lesser than first degree murder, maybe second degree murder or something like that. Uh, can you explain why they would let somebody out that quick okay. Thank after you. this? Thank you, sir. Yeah, I think, I think the, the answer to your question is once they have enough evidence to ch file charges against that second person, they will. I think right now they're they're being cautious to make sure that they have an airtight case and they move forward. But I agree with you. I mean, no question he was involved. Uh, we're trying to figure out to what degree he was, and then they'll go from there. But They'll get him. They'll get him. Yeah. All right. Henry Perea's here. Got to take a break. We'll come back and talk water rates in just a moment. 436, Me TV Option 11. When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Samsung big screen we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start. But you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Time for that upgrade to an HD 3D web-enabled Samsung TV. Get the best selection, price, and service in town without waiting. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. Back here with Henry Perea, senior that is, and he's been around the, these parts a long time. He's a supervisor. We're glad he's here talking about the water rates. And I want to put the council members up just one more time so you get a good look. I know who uh, you should know who your councilman is or councilwoman. Esmeralda, of course, new to the council. Steve Brandau, uh, Oliver Baines, and, of course, uh, Paul Capriolio. And then the next three, Quintero, Brand, and Olivier. So they're, they're possibly going to vote. And then the mailers went out. We showed the mailers. We'll put them up one more quick time. Um, and as we do, Henry, you guys talked about this as a board, as a, as, a, as a governing body, the supervisors last week. You voted three to two not to send the 30 or 40 ballots that the county had. Why? Well, well two things. One is, is even though we are a, a water user with the city of Fresno, which is why we received those ballots, we could have voted, but I think out of respect to our colleagues at City Hall, 
we said we're going to pull back and we're not going to exercise these votes because they're really not going to make a difference in terms of the final outcome. But there's no question we have concerns about what you're doing. So we, instead, we sent them a letter saying, look, we know you have to upgrade your infrastructure. It's about a $200 million project there. Do that first. And as far as the surface water treatment plant, make that a plan B and wait until you know what kind of money you're going to get from the state before you tax the local uh, taxpayers. Because remember, we just passed a water bond in California last November. So the citizens are going to be taxed already for that water bond. So why tax them twice yeah. when we can get our fair share of that money to reduce the cost of our service water treatment plant, then build the remainder? So we're asking them to wait. If you were on the council, question one, would you vote in, in favor of raising the rates the way that the plan is now, the $429 million plan? I would vote no on you that, on that no. plan today. What I would vote for is, is a bifurcation of the plan. Spend the $200 million to rebuild aging infrastructure within the city now and hold off on the surface water treatment plan gotcha. until we know what we get from the so state. So you're basically cutting that plan in half. Absolutely. That's what, that's, that's what your suggestion to the city right. would be right. if they were to ask. Yeah. Well, that's the letter we sent them this past yeah. week. So. Yeah, but, but, but voting not to send those mailers in, do you think it was out of respect and just not to insult the city? Well, it was more out of respect. I, I think, you know, we, you know we, if we would have been the last 30 votes that we're going to make the deciding the tipping point of go no go on the plan yeah. we probably would have sent them in to yeah. be honest with you but uh you know there's several thousand votes away so it was more a it would have been more of a symbolic gesture and probably created some bad relations between both bodies so yeah. instead we said let's just pull back let's respect what they're, the decision they have to make, but also weigh in as, as customers as to what we think they should be doing. Yeah, now they've got uh, 40,000 of those mailers that, 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 that went in, uh, or roughly 40,000. They needed 66,000. I'm not sure where that they got that figure from. I know they, they said from parcels, but they don't know exactly how many parcels there are. So even if it falls short of the 66,000, do you think the city as a, as a governing body can ignore 40? thousand of those ballots that no you in. can't and that's a great great comment and or point and i think that's why the council is uh is going to spend more time talking about it so when you think about forty thousand customers who exercise their right to say no hold off uh they're doing the math now uh, as to which districts those ballots are in so and when you have some city council members yeah. who, who win council seats with four or five thousand votes they're going to want to know how many of those are in their districts caller you're on with henry perea go ahead Yes, uh, I just want to say that I think it's a it's a it's, it's a mistake for any elected official to not allow uh, the constituents that live within Fresno County and are going to be affected by this uh, water vote to to be able to voice their opinion on the vote. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, you know you have you know the people living in Fresno who are in the county areas they should have that they should have that say and have their votes counted. Um, because they're going to be affected by it. And, and for the city council to make any kind of vote, should they make a vote and not have the voices or not have the uh, uh, information from those people who live in the county that are in the area that, that will be affected, um, I think that's a, a big mistake. And yeah. I think it's, it, it's wrong. It's, just, it's blatantly okay. wrong. All right. Uh, and I, I, would ag you. I would agree with you, and that which is why all of the people that live in the unincorporated areas within the city did receive that ballot and did, did have the opportunity to yeah. exercise their, their vote. I think what yeah. the caller is saying is that the Board of Supervisors' voice is just as important on this issue, even though it's part of the county and it's not really incorporated with the city and has nothing to do with the city, your voice is just as important. Right, and, and no question. So, so the, the question or the thought process of our political body is how do we exercise that voice? I mean, it, the easy thing would have been let's send back 30 ballots and we're done. But I think the more important and the most effective was here are the four or five things that we think you should do differently and we gave it to them in writing and that has generated another level of discussion. So I think we've been effective in, in getting our position across. All right, we're going to move on here. I just, I, I got to take a break, but just to reiterate, we're going to move on in terms of topics, but just to reiterate, you're in favor of maybe raising them uh, maybe incrementally, small amounts uh, over the course of five years, but cut the project in half so it costs less. Right. That's basically That's the at. bottom yeah. line. And and when you were in the council, it seems like I got to take a break, but I, I got to ask you this because it didn't seem like this when you were on the council. It seems like now the sky is falling. The sky is falling. We got to do this now. It wasn't like that when you were on the council. Right. You guys never claimed the sky was falling. Why are they claiming that all the time? You know, I think it's just every. It, it, like any political body, you know, times change, <laughs> people change within it, and the yeah. dynamic changes. So it's just, 
I don't know. I, I guess that's all I'll say about that. Yeah, I don't know. The sky is falling mentality. I just, I don't, I, I'm not buying into that. I got to, you know, pause and, you know, step back a minute and see what's going on. 436, me TV option 11. We're back with Henry Pere in just a moment. <laughs> this fall, there is a place familiar and inviting, timeless and warm. Me TV, a place all your own that you can call home. Hi, honey, I'm home. This fall, home is where you'll find me. You mean to tell me that's all there is to it? That's all. Me TV Fresno, channel 43.6 and Xfinity 187. Back here with Henry Perea, and the, he is the supervisor here in Fresno County. Glad he's here. I've known him for many, many years. I want to talk about a recent board meeting that took place before the holidays in December, talking about marijuana. Uh, the board considered lifting the ban on cultivating marijuana. We'll roll the videotape on some of those medical marijuana plants. Uh, medical marijuana, but it, but it didn't happen. Why? Well, there's no question there's a, there's a conflict in law between federal and state law, which is why a lot of our California counties are struggling with this issue. But when the medical marijuana law did pass in California, we tried to work with folks to allow them the opportunity to grow that plant for their personal use. But I think as we rode forward, we found there was a lot of abuse. A lot of cartels came in, took advantage of the law, and what we had were just large groves where marijuana was being grown and, and basically sold on the black market. So we went from the extreme of, of help, trying to help folks who need medical marijuana to we just put a complete ban on it. And we did for a, for a small time consider in late December, well, should we open it up a little bit, but we decided not to. So we have a, a ban of, of marijuana, cultivating marijuana in Fresno County. Will the board ever lift the ban? You know, I don't think so under current conditions. Uh, I, I don't believe we will. But uh, what I do, though, believe we have a responsibility to do is I, th I think there are some people who legitimately can benefit from medical marijuana for the illnesses that they have. I think we have an obligation to figure out how to get that medication to those patients. We haven't yet, but I think that's still one of our responsibilities. Yeah, there are some uses, and I do want to put up the full screens of uh, what people use medical marijuana for because we have a whole list that we put together. I'm glad you mentioned that, uh, Henry, uh, because, I mean, this is th these are the many uses uh, by various people that use marijuana for medical purposes. You can see the list there. It's yeah. quite it's quite extensive, yeah. as you can see. Yeah, and I don't doubt that it has a, a medical use. I, mean, I was just talking to my brother this weekend, who has a friend, whose you know 16 year old son is is not going to make it. You know, have very mm. very. very bad form of cancer yeah. but it's just recently they acquired some medical marijuana to help them relieve the pain and it did yeah. and they're thankful for that so it just reiterate you know reiterate in my mind you know we have a responsibility to figure out how to get that medical marijuana legitimately to those who legitimately need it but, okay. what, but what was happening wasn't working caller go ahead you're on the air um getting back to uh the thing that you said about the skies falling the skies falling <laughs> you know um I always feel that when someone's rushing uh, people to do something, it's all about somebody's personal scam or reason for them to do something so quick. Like when you order stuff on TV and it has a clock going and say, the first, you know, we got only one hour and they're running down the clock in front of you, making it think it's a good product, which is probably not a good product. I never fall for those scams, but you now getting back to the marijuana issue, I have uh, chronic problems that I need my medical marijuana, and they should allow the grow. But see, just like with alcohol or any other drug that's on the market, I mean, they should go after the criminal that's doing the wrong thing, not the person that needs it and then ban it completely. They should go after the criminal. That's why we have law enforcement to go after the criminal that do the wrong thing and leave the... Uh, public that is the uh, society that needs uh, things to, to do what they need to do. Okay. Thanks, caller. Well, we do. <laughs> yeah, we go after the bad guys, but uh, I'll tell you, we just got to a point where we couldn't tell the good guy from the bad guy because there was so much growing all over this county. You did consider also in December, I think you kind of touched on it briefly, uh, to allow up to 12 plants right. and to also allow for a hearing officer for medical marijuana use. Neither of those happened. Why? Well, at that point, 
we were in transition to a new board of supervisors. Oh, and I think yeah. the decision at that point was, this is a big issue. This current board has carried it to this point. But if we're going to make changes now on a go forward basis, let's let the two new soups come on and let's have that discussion then. So I, I think we'll have this discussion again. But honestly, I, I don't think much will change. Where does Mendez and Pacheco stand on this? Same as you? Yeah, I don't know. I haven't talked to them about this issue and we okay. haven't had it before. So I don't know where they're Now, at. Andreas Borges said that the ban is having a positive effect and it will continue to do so. Do you have evidence of that? Is there, are there, is there data? Well, I don't know what he means by positive effect. But but if the uh, ban, I guess he's talking about yeah, the ban. Yeah, and these yeah. are the, many of the grows that you see uh, out uh, in Fresno County. There, Henry. Yeah, well, uh, we have less grows uh, than we, obviously than we had before, but it's a very lucrative market. You know, when you talk about one plant, just one plant can generate uh, nine to ten thousand uh, dollars. It doesn't take many plants to to become rich. Yeah. So have so we're we're fighting that every day. Our, our our folks are out there looking for these girls and we take them out as soon as we can find them. For, has the general public called your office or any office of uh, the supervisor complaining about the ban? You know, uh, no. The only ones that are complaining of the bans are the, obviously the folks that come to the uh, board and ask us to not do it, to let them do yeah. something. But uh, the general public in general is saying, hey, thank you. Caller, limited time. Go ahead. You're on with uh, the supervisor, Henry Perea. I was just wondering what um, Mr. Perea has and ha is thinking about doing for the people that legitimately need to have medical marijuana. I use it for chronic pain, and I also have anxiety. And uh, I know that not being able to obtain that is, also, uh, is something that's very hard for people who are legitimately trying to take care of themselves. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and I don't disagree with you. That, that's a legitimate uh, question and concern. Uh, in my perfect world, uh, I would want our county health department to become a dispensary, to, to function as a pharmacy. Then the question would be is, is how would we then access the marijuana to get into our system then to distribute to folks. We haven't figured that one out yet. I don't have a lot of support to doing that yet, but I haven't abandoned that issue. So, yeah, I... I Part of my responsibility beyond saying no to something, which was which what we've done in marijuana, yeah. is how do you get to the middle? How do you fix the problem? And I think we still need to fix that problem of getting medicine to those who really need it. That's the dilemma, allowing right. the medical marijuana yet cracking down on crime. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Changing topics now because limited time here. The board also supported a five-year plan for a youth psychiatric facility ages 12 to 18. It's finally come to pass here in Fresno. They don't have to leave the area. That plan, that's a good vote in your opinion. Oh, absolutely. And when does that program start? Well, we're remodeling the building now. We're uh, on the Kings Canyon Valley Medical Center complex. So we're going to be using one of those facilities as a psych unit. And we expect it to open April 1st. So oh. it's, it's coming along uh, pretty well. And when you think about Cedar Vista Hospital, for those who remember you know, back in the 80s, that's the last time this community had an inpatient unit facility for kids. That long ago. That long ago. And every day the county sends kids up and down this state uh, to be housed in units where, that need that acute care. So why not in Fresno County so we can wrap the care of these kids around their families you know, at a time when they need their family near them, not a far, apart from them from, you know, when we move them across the state. And it's so. for long-term care, 12 years to 18 years old. Right. Caller, you're there. You're on the line, I, I hope. You're on with Henry Perea. Hello? Yeah, you're on the air. Go ahead. I'm on. Okay, uh, hi. I'm 69 years old, and I have um, both rheumatoid and osteoarthritis plus other issues, and I'm on, have been prescribed all kinds of heavy-duty narcotics, and I have had to get medical marijuana for my grandson in Los Angeles who legitimately has medical marijuana. So there's no hope for me to get it, it myself in Fresno. I have to continue to get it through someone else. Okay, go ahead. Well, right now, that, that's the condition now. But I, I'd like to say, no, it's not that there's no hope for you. I, I think there are some people who are wanting to work on and find a way for you to get that medicine. All we know is what was happening wasn't working because of the abuse. But we still have a responsibility, in my opinion, to get that medicine to you and find a way to do that. And I'm working on that. Two more quick questions here. Um, the board voted to accept that $2 million grant for the county assessor's office, Paul Dictos. Right. Number one, did he get the money? And why is that such an important issue? 
You know, it's, it's important because uh, the one thing that's unique about the county, we have five elected board of supervisors who oversee a $2 billion county operation. But within that structure, we have other elected officers like Paul Dictos, who's an assessor, and he's a constitutional state officer. It's just the way the structure is set up. They're a part of our system. So we have to respect the right that he has a constitutional responsibility to assess properties properly within our jurisdiction. Why does he need that money? Well, he needs that money in this particular instance to upgrade uh, some of the processes and systems that he has, but also to hire staff so they can do assessments on a timely basis. Oh, so, you okay. know, going out to your home, if, he, if he's charging you too much, well, then obviously you want to be charged a proper amount. If he's charging you too little, then he needs to, he needs to get you where you legally should be. But our responsibility, I believe, as a board is when these types of opportunities come from the state to saying, here is money for you to upgrade your system so you can properly assess the properties in oh, your county. I, I mean, we Can't should do be it doing without it. the money. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. One final thing, and I know you have another appointment, so I'm going to let you go. And I want to I want to bring this thing up with Margaret Mims. It was in the Fresno Bee in November. Of course, uh, the Bee reported that she sent a couple of deputies over to Madera County to help Mark <laughs> Borba. He's obviously a campaign donor, and apparently uh, this, this man, Borba, has a, a son who has some mental issues and some problems. And uh, did, did you find a problem with that when you read that in the paper? You know, I did. And uh, I mean, first, let me say I, I sympathize with the Borba family and, and dealing with the issue of mental yes, illness. That's not, too, that's not something anybody wants to deal with. No. But what I do know is this. Uh, when when another county or city calls for mutual aid or instant aid, we have agreements where, where we do those kinds of things when when your resources are stretched and, and you have an emergency, basically. Would you have done it? This did not fall under that criteria, and I would say no. No, I would not have done it because we have enough issues in Fresno County yeah. where we don't need to be sending our, our officers, in this case, to another county to deal with an issue that that county can deal with. So. I don't think it was an appropriate use of, of resources. I told the sheriff yeah. that. Uh, I was very clear with my board that I wasn't happy about that, and I don't think it'll happen again. Yeah, and, and our hearts and prayers go out to the Borba family, too, because right. I know there are, our viewers go way out in Madera. They go way up to Merced and beyond, so right. there are viewers that, that watch this program, and uh, I don't mean to say anything negative about the Borba family because uh, mental illness is a big problem. Sure. And mm -hmm. I'm glad you guys voted for that uh, psychiatric facility because it's very well needed here in the Central Valley. You bet. All right. Supervisor Perea. Thank you. Great being here. Hey, thank you. Good seeing you. Happy New Year to you. And I'll bring you that cigar from Cuba. Okay. Have a good, safe okay. trip down there. All <laughs> right. Back with our second half of our program, and we're going to talk to Attorney Chuck McGill. And we still have some phone lines open. 436-MeTV, option 11. Frigidaire, it means the first electric refrigerator, the first compact electric range. Now, there's the Frigidaire Gallery Range with Symmetry Double Ovens. It's designed to cook multiple dishes at multiple temperatures so you can prepare the entire meal at the same time. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. Tough TV is the first digital broadcast network to offer first-run original programming targeted at men. Tough TV features content that men are passionate about. Sports. No matter what happens in the fight, ooh, good right, left. He's coming on strong. Lifestyle. What we've done is we've created a technology that allows us to run video games in extremely powerful servers in server centers. Drama. Did you cause this? Reality. Welcome to this edition of Eye for an Eye. Now, today in court, we have the case of the reckless brother who tried to unravel his own family ties. Talk. Play. Damn, we have a winner! Specials. I'm Dick Butkus. Welcome to the Butkus Awards TV special. And movies. Everybody, you need, put your hands on the table. Sports, lifestyle, drama, reality, talk, specials, and movies. Are you tough enough? The Ballad of Andy and Barney. Andy and Barney were lawmen, bravest you ever did see. Warned ever croak in the record book to stay out of Mayberry. They were the law. Yes, they were the law. And they didn't know fear. The Andy Griffith Show. I guess to sum it up, you could say there's three reasons why there's so little crime in Mayberry. There's Andy, and there's me. And baby makes three. <laughs> now on Me TV Fresno. Welcome.
Welcome to a new beginning. An adventure that goes well beyond passive diversions. Empowering through exploration. Engaging your passions. Inspiring with lives lived outdoors. Come with us. Untamed Sports TV. You can find Untamed Sports on over the air channel 13.8. We get our speed from mom and dad. They do stuff super fast. And now they got this new kitchen, so they're even faster. So they can help us with our free throws. The time-saving Frigidaire Gallery line with a quick preheat and smudge-proof stainless steel that resists fingerprints and cleans easily. It's mealtime in no time from start to clean. Frigidaire Gallery. Save more during Frigidaire Gallery bonus days when you buy three or more qualifying appliances. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. Back here on the show, connect with me on MeTV Fresno on this Thursday morning. Exciting uh, program, tackling a lot of issues here today. And the telephone number, in case you want to join us, is 436 MeTV, option 11. And I want to welcome in a friend of this program. And um, he's been a friend since almost the beginning, Chuck McGill, the defense attorney. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, thanks. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. Can we still say that? It's in February. Well, it's okay. Man. Right, I haven't right, seen good. you since True. Uh, 2014. True. <laughs> what year is this again? Ah. <laughs> uh. Anyway, that color combination looks fantastic. Is that Saks Fifth Avenue, my friend? That's good. That's good looking stuff, man. It's just whatever Laura thought would be best to put together. Yeah. yeah. God rest her soul. Yeah. Thank your, you. Your ex-wife. All right, let's, let's get to the meat of this thing. I want to talk about um, Cooks and Stafford. I want to put their pictures up. Okay. Not that you haven't seen them before. You've seen them twice already during this program. Sure. Anyway, so Cooks and Stafford. Cooks is on the left, Stafford on the right, and, of course, uh, uh, Stafford was let go. Uh, who do we blame here? Do we blame the DA's office? Lisa Smithcamp just got elected, of course. Or do we blame the police for not for arresting someone without having enough evidence to begin with? Who do we blame mm. here? You know, I, don't, I don't know that there's any blame that should be passed to either group. I mean, the, the, the in law enforcement's responsibility is to investigate. District attorney's responsibility is to prosecute. And so far, I think Lisa Smithcamp has done a great job of um, investigating cases from her position as a prosecutor. Um, this case, I've, I've been privy to a lot of information because I've, I've, I've talked about it a little bit, and so I had people come up to me and give me information. And I don't think the public's aware that Mr. Stafford was never identified as a gang member and has never been identified as a gang member. He has no criminal record. And I thought the police described it as a gang shooting. They, that was the initial take, and I, the, the, from what I understand from the facts that as they're coming through is that Stafford was in a vehicle with other people that were in his car. Now whether those people are, and he and, never fired a shot. And whether those people are identified as gang members or not, I, I don't know. I want to know who fired the shot. We but, don't know that yet. Well, we huh? do know. We do know that well, Mr. Well, Cooks we know bullet, Cooks did. We know Cooks' bullet was the one that that struck right. poor little Janessa and, and killed her. But who fired um, that bullet? From the car, the Dodge Challenger. We don't know that yet. Do we don't we? know that, and we don't, and we don't have any evidence that Stafford was the person that was shooting back at Mr. Cooks. I mean, the, as things are evolving, you know, Stafford has been ha, had been a witness in a gang prosecution. Then that was the motivation for Cooks to be against out for out for yeah. Stanford, Stafford. But he's complained a number of times to Fresno police that he's been shot at previous to this incident. Mm -hmm. So the, I, th I think the reality of it is, is that there's more to this story as to the, who was shooting back. Clearly, Cooks is going to say he was firing back at someone being firing, firing at him because there was a number of bullet holes in the vehicle that he was behind. Yeah. But it's also clear that there was one bullet that he fired, and that bullet was the fatal bullet that killed Janessa because they can prove that by now, ballistics. Didn't, didn't police, did, did I hear the news conference correctly, didn't Jerry Dyer say that whoever was in that Dodge Challenger, they fired first at Brian Cooks 
and it cooks return fire, and that's when he hit Janessa. Is, it, mm -hmm. is that how I, did I hear that correctly? You know, I don't know, John, if, the, if that's what the, the, the uh, chief said, but it appears as though they're charging cooks with murder, and they would be charging cooks with murder based upon transferred intent. Yeah, it's, you know, this is a tough one to figure out. We don't know that, that Cooks uh, was a rain the other day. Caller, you're on with Chuck McGill. Go ahead, sir. What's your question? Yes, uh, I was just going to say, uh, or ask, uh, with Mr., with a, in reference to Mr. Stafford, wouldn't, can't the police hold him in terms, as a material witness? I mean, I mean, uh, has he given up the names of people who are in the Challenger with him? And, uh, and of course, he must have been a witness if he wasn't the shooter. So why, and so why hasn't the police uh, held him in order to uh, 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 you know, um, secure this information uh, mm. from Mr. Stafford? I mean, either he's a shooter, or if he says he wasn't a shooter, then he knows who was from that wow. car. Wow, that is a great question. You see, this is why this okay. is a call-in show, All right, can because I, I do not ask the best <laughs> questions. The no, no. callers ask the best questions. No, see no, that? I want to think about it. I want to respond to that directly. Now, <laughs> if you're have. a witness to a crime, <laughs> do you think you should be thrown in jail until that crime has been prosecuted because out of fear that you might disappear? That sounds a lot like Nazi Germany. That's not America, and that's not our, our Constitution. <laughs> you cannot arrest somebody because they've witnessed a crime, and you cannot force them to speak to law enforcement. They have a Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. So the callers living in a world that I don't believe would be very comfortable to live in in the United States of America. So we they believe can't hold him just because he's Absolutely. got information. Absolutely not. And if you were representing Absolutely him, not. what would you what would you say? I'd sue for false arrest. And I yeah. would I'd be suing I would be in marching up to the court right now with with papers to get him released under habeas corpus. Now the now I don't think simply because you're involved in a crime that you were involved in something that happened like this automatically it should place you as a, at risk of being prosecuted right. or arrested. I think that the way that, and, and, the, and the reality is, the district, because this is a murder case, the, the district attorney has plenty of time to do a, a proper and full investigation. Yeah. And, and I, don't, I don't think the public should be at all concerned that Mr. Stafford was released. If the way things are coming, that he was, he was also a victim of being a focus of, of gang violence, uh, focused at him, yeah. that he shouldn't be in jail because he was shot at, Partic even if someone shot back, because they have a right to try to defend themselves. Yeah. I'm telling you, my friends, you, the viewer out there, ask better questions than the host. That's why this is a call-in program. That was a great question. Yeah, Didn't was. you like that? I loved it. <laughs> Caller, you're on with Chuck McGill. Go ahead. Yes, I'm sorry, John. I just previously, it was a call that called previously, and I just wanted to say to Mr. McGill that if, if he is uh, saying that he was not the shooter, and well, then therefore he has nothing to worry about in terms of infringing upon his Fifth Amendment right because of, uh, you know, of incriminating himself because he wasn't the shooter. But the fact that he does know who the shooter is, uh, wouldn't, that be, wouldn't it be incumbent upon him to express that to the police? Wouldn't the police you know, have him do that? Like withholding evidence? Is that what you're saying? I mean, Incriminating yourself is, is there's, there's no, nothing to incriminate, to incriminate you with if in fact you were not the shooter. Well, so there I, is no fear. Let me of see that if thing. I let me see if I if I understand your question. Are you saying he should be charged because he's withholding evidence? I don't know. Is, is that how you understood I, no, that? No, I think what he's I think he's trying to reiterate that 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 Mr. Uh, Stafford has a duty to tell the police what happened. Okay. He's it's trying not to so much he's withholding. Trying to he's trying to reiterate that he believes yeah. that they should be able to force him into giving them information. And uh, once again, I would remind the, the caller that even though this is a this is a serious crime and we all want to see resolution of it, com complete and full, you've got to recognize that people have a right to remain silent. He may not be incriminating himself, but he can't be forced to, forced to testify to, to law enforcement or be forced to, t to talk to them. He can be subpoenaed for court and he can be asked on the stand. But he certainly can't be forced to testify. If that was the case, if someone, if, if if law enforcement had the power to force people to testify to them or speak to them under oath or or in any way, just think about what how that would that would work out in our society. Um, Any time that you're watching something that occurred, you could be forced to testify to law enforcement about what's going on. I mean, that's not the kind of society I think we want to live in in California or no. in the United States of America. Not yet. All right. The great defense attorney himself, Chuck McGill, is here. He's been practicing law for more than a quarter century that long. Oh, my gosh. And you're only 25. 
436 Meet TV Option 11. Do call in because I'm telling you, my friends, you do ask better questions than your host or anybody else for that matter. Back in just a moment. Attention, all units. We have reports of two motorcycle cops protecting California's highway. That's for us, good buddy. The men of chips are on Meet TV. Hi, I'm John Baker. I'm John Baker. He's Officer Baker. He's the blonde one. Hi there. Oh, it's Poncherello, man. Frank Poncherello. Oh, I'm Frank Poncherello. And he's the one who's Eric Estrada. There's no way I wouldn't remember a name like that. Catch the blonde one and the one who's Eric Estrada. On now Chips. on MeTV Fresno, Xfinity 187. <laughs> Back here on the program, connect with me. Good to have you along there, caller. Are you on the air? Go ahead. Yeah, uh, Mr. Uh, the lawyer, you're awesome. These people in this community don't understand it. They haven't been falsely arrested before. You don't want to just be arrested and sit in jail and they figure it out later. It's six months of your life's gone. Yeah. Um, they don't understand. He's got a whole life that they can try to prosecute this guy and find the facts on. Mm -hmm. Why jump in the thing like everybody's saying, don't jump and react? Don't jump and react to this. Get the conviction. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is America. That's why there are procedures. That's why it is this way. And all these people are just talking smack and don't have a dang bit of clue of why it is this way. Mm -hmm. Listen to the attorney. He knows what he's talking about. He's there every single day. Yeah, he's on the show. You got it. And John, your show rocks, man. Keep it up, bro. <laughs> All right. Hey, you rock, my friend, Thank because you, you guys ask great questions. Uh, sure great do. question today. There are those people out there that will say, though, that, hey, you know what? These gangbangers, they're all bad guys. we got to get them off the street. And your response to them would be? You know, you're right. We need to stop gang violence in, in Fresno. It's terrible. And an innocent life like Janessa's brings it home to us so desperately that we need to as a community work on it but the things that we need to work on is we need to change the thing that creates the gangs to exist to begin with and that is children being raised on the street by other children and that's yeah. where gang membership comes from it, it, the the old book the lord of the flies i think if you read that you understand how we have gangs in fresno yeah. And that is, you cannot let teenagers raise themselves with other teenagers, or they'll become violent. I want to put up a picture of a defense attorney here in Fresno that you know very well. I talked to him just briefly on the phone uh, just the other day. His name is Eric Green. He said, nah, I don't want to come on your show. I, I, I. But he did interview with Channel 30, and he said that, and I want to get your reaction to this, um, and then I'll ask you what kind of guy he is, because I don't know him. He said that Stafford is just as much a victim as, as, as Janessa is in this case. Yeah. Would, you, would you agree with that? You know, from what, I, what I'm gleaning from the community, and, and I've had people stop me and talk to me out in the, in, you know, at the car wash. <laughs> about, about this case? About this case. Wow. And tell me that Stafford had complained uh, that he'd been shot at and made police reports of being shot at a number of times after he was observed a, another, sh another gang out, a gang activity a number yeah. of years ago where a gang member went to prison for a number of years and so they've been after him and uh, I know Eric Green and I know he I know his he's, he's credible. He represents Stafford. He does and Eric has been in the system for, as a lawyer for 30 years he was a former prosecutor yeah. they, then he worked with Ernie Kinney on a number of death penalty cases he's he's a solid yeah. member of a community if he says this guy is is a victim I, I tend to believe him that's the reason why I've been doing a little homework. Caller go ahead you're on the air. You know, on the part of the gang thing, we don't really have gangs like they used to have gangs. This is, this is, they throw everything in the category of gangs instead of dealing with the real issues. On top of that, Eric Green, he's a public defender. What more could you want if you were stuck in jail than a guy like this? I mean, mm -hmm. Grant, you might not like what he's doing, but from the other side of it, this guy is, you couldn't ask for anything more from a public defender. He doesn't just sit there and hang you up to dry. I mean, everybody should be saying, thank you, at least he's doing his job correctly. Instead of saying F you to him, man. Hmm. Okay. Look at both sides of it. Okay. You got it. Thanks, caller, for that perspective. So, what kind of a guy is Green? Because I, I have nothing against him. I've never met him. Uh, seemed like a character on the phone. He's got this kind of a gruff tone about him but uh. oh, he's a character but, <laughs> but eric's a private attorney and he does okay. appointed cases and he's, he's he's done a number of appointed cases as high as death penalty cases and among his peers and i consider myself one of his peers he's very well respected yeah and he's he's been a, he's been around fresno's system as both a prosecutor and a defense attorney for probably 40 years to my wow. 25 you know wow um, amazing and uh what he says is, <laughs> is truth. Gospel, huh? It's truth. <laughs> <laughs> another, 
another phone call He's here. He's an old Marine that's not going to change the, the fact that it's Simper Fi, MF. <laughs> <laughs> Caller, go ahead. Caller? Uh, let me ask a question for Chuck directly now. Uh, 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 the defense for, uh, for the uh, gentleman that got off uh, of uh, the crime, uh, Jeanette, is now on the defense side, okay, let's say his, his, uh, uh, the one he's protecting uh, gets off. I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people that would go after him just for the just for because of the hate that he got off, okay. But that's not his. I mean, that's his job as far as a defense uh, attorney. And yeah. like you, Chuck, the same way. I, I'm pretty sure that you get yourself in a situation uh, protecting people or whatever, or whether you think they're guilty or not. That's not your job. That's the jury's job, okay. But the thing is that so many people have this idea about uh, defense uh, attorneys that. They're the bad guy. Yeah. They're there to do their job. Mm -hmm. Okay. You need them. So, yeah. I just want to ask you a question. Do you think attorneys get the bad rap? I'm I, I'm talking about defense attorneys. You know, that's their job. You know, yeah. and sometimes I know they're pretty sure. I bet you they they uh, they get threatened and, and it scares okay. the family and whatnot. So, all right. Do you think that that's a a, a right question to ask? Thank you. You know, th that's a really good point, and I really appreciate the caller giving me the opportunity to, to defend my profession. Um, a defense attorney's responsibility is to his client. A uh, prosecutor's responsibility is to the state. Um, I think a defense attorney has a more focused and easy ethical job because his job is to protect an individual. Um, and what I think about, and, and I think that the public should be aware of, you know, um, one of our first presidents, um, John Adams, defended a British soldier accused of, uh, of killing uh, some early Virginians. And he was very maligned by his peers for his stance because it was very unpopular pre-revolutionary war to defend the, a British soldier involved in a riot. But he did that because it was the right thing to do. And I think that that's, that still permeates our profession. It's, I think lawyers still fight for the rights of individuals, even when it's not publicly popular. Here, <laughs> because we're so damn angry about this killing, and we should be, it's a horrible thing for an innocent nine-year-old to be killed. Uh, we, want it, we want to seek justice, and we want to arrest everybody that we think could have anything to do with it. And it may be premature for that decision. And as things are evolving, it appears as though Mr. Green's right that Mr. Stafford was a victim in this, too. He was being shot at. Um, in order to ro prosecute Mr. Cook for murder, they have to prove that he was not acting in self-defense. So if he's the first shooter... Really? If he's the first shooter... And he's shooting at Stafford and intending to kill anyone in that in that vehicle. That transfer intent goes in, follows that bullet right into Janessa, and so he could be charged with first degree murder and convicted. However, if he's shooting after being shot at, he's shooting in self-defense. It could be an imperfect self-defense, but it would still still lessen the degree of his exposure. So what would it we, be then? We need to get a, it could be manslaughter. It could be manslaughter. So because he fired in defense. Because he was being fired at and he fired back in return. Wow. So the key here is, in this case, from the pers public's perspective, is... You know, we don't want to pick up everybody that was that was involved, and and we'll we can we have time to figure out what Mr. Stafford's involvement is. But at this point, Mr. Cook, we don't want to provide him a defense for of self-defense either. We want to make sure that the that if he was the shooter and he was the first to shoot, that he's prosecuted for the crime that he committed. Caller, go ahead. I don't understand how everybody's so surprised about a nine-year-old being killed. People aren't seeing everything that's happening in this town daily. Yeah. When report my daughter being molested. I was hung up on three times by our police department. Yeah. Nobody was sent out. Type on YouTube, Fresno CPS. They laughed at my son has a handprint, yeah. won't give me ID and failed to show ID. This, this our whole local enforcement. My car was broken into just recently. They don't. They didn't even test for fingerprints. This whole thing is our police department is the problem that we're having. Mm. You have to lead by example. You can't have a person that's been convicted of statutory rape leading the whole town, $6.8 million in drugs missing from your locker room, Really? And you wonder why nobody respects anybody? Mm. And the whole gang thing, you have to sit there. If the police aren't going to show up, what are you going to do? This is called survival. Don't take this thing and make it the way it is and then sit there and say, why is it this way? Stop creating the problem and do the thing the way it's supposed to be done. 
Okay, thank you for the call. I appreciate it very much. Now, is it possible, let me ask you a two-part question. Stafford being released, number one, is his life in danger? That's one. That's a part one question. And part of his release maybe would lead police or investigators to other potential possible suspects? Clearly, the prosecutor who was providing the reports on Stafford after he was arrested concluded that they couldn't prove charges against him, otherwise they'd okay. have brought him. You know, and there could be two reasons for that. One is you wouldn't want to try Stafford and and Cook together because you might be providing Cook with a defense or you know of self-defense or Stafford with a defense of self-defense. Um, those would be ones you want to separate. So I, I my hat's off to our new prosecutor. Lisa Smith Camp. Lisa Smith Camp, because I think that she's not trying to rush to judgment. Because obviously, look at the public's response. They're angry about Stafford being released, but it was, I'm sure it was the right thing to do, and I'm sure that she, they, they had a lot of thought involved in it. But will he lead them to other potential suspects? Do you think? I'm, I, I suspect that the investigation is not going to end, and they're yeah. spending a lot of time, man hours on it. I mean, the chief said they spent 1,600 hours before they arrest, made the arrest. That's a lot of man hours. And the other thing is, if he has information, his life could be at risk. Well, and, and, and to follow up the tail end of the, the caller's question, and that is, this case strikes us all as from being a parent yeah. that our child could be killed in the crossfire of gang violence it's hard to say what drives us as a community but when something happens like this we tend to focus on this this individual there's lots of children like like henry was talking about other children yeah. that have been killed in gang violence but this one struck a chord with us yeah, no. and it may very well be because the way the mother has responded by being so forgiving and such a christian lady um dealing with this death it, it makes us all feel terrible because this little girl was going to end up being somebody in our community that was a value not a not a loss caller we have about a minute left uh, it's got to be quick go ahead sir or ma'am i don't know who, who is it okay um sir. about the law what about the law use a gun go to prison? And second of all, why don't they make a law that have uh, these gang members that have guns, you know, and use them, go to prison? Oh, they have. The, there's the, the gang enhancement is so serious that if you attach a gang enhancement to a, a felony that's that doesn't have a lot of exposure, you can get a lot of time in custody on a gang enhancement alone. 10, 15, 25 years is, 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 the, is the space. So now we've got laws in the books to um, prosecute people who are doing gang violence, and it's severe and serious. Let me throw another question at you here. Henry Perea, the supervisor, was here on this show before you. We talked about the ban on marijuana. Should they lift the ban, in your opinion, or I keep think, it? I think the you know the, the, it's interesting that just I just heard last night on Conan that the that the Surgeon General came out in support of medical marijuana. When you have the Surgeon General of the United States coming out in support of medical marijuana, we need to wake up to the fact that medical marijuana has a positive response. I talk about it from my personal life, and that is I lost my wife to breast cancer last yes. year, and she used and she she used medical marijuana in sol forms as a salve as well as um, you know as an edible, and it brought relief and wow. um, when someone's going through that type of uh, disease, they should have all options available that make them feel better that don't do damage and medical marijuana is one of those things to do so i'm a strong advocate for medical lift marijuana. the ban lift the ban okay just because uh, people are abusing it that does that's no excuse not to have it available okay chuck mcgill you know you're welcome here anytime we'll fit you John. in my friend anytime Thank anytime you. yeah even I'm if here. obama's here we'll fit you in we'll just, <laughs> hey, 30 minutes for you if you've got obama here i want to be here <laughs> i haven't met the president <laughs> Chuck McGill, the defense attorney here in Fresno, well-respected. Thanks for your time. Thanks, John. All right. Back tomorrow with another edition of Connect With Me on MeTV Fresno.